This was played at Moscow, November 28th, 1947. And Pokemon with D4. So we have the Queen's Gambit declined again, modern variation again. Knight F3, Knight BD7, Pawn E3, Pawn C6, Queen C2, pretty much the same opening. Castles, Rook D1. And this, by the way, this castle here marks Rubenstein's variation. Rook D1, A6. Bishop to D3. Usually this is going to provoke D takes C, but in this case, pawn to H6 is played. Bishop f4, now d takes c, so he waited a move to, to do it. And then after b5, the bishop just steps back. But in this case, he played bishop to e2. So, I mean, you can also put it back where it was. Yeah, I'm not real clear on the difference between bishop d3 and bishop e2 in this position. That'd be something maybe to ask the end game magician or somebody who's a little more familiar with this Queen's Gambit Orthodox line, Rubenstein's variation. What's the idea, the differences in the ideas between these two squares? in these two diagonals. Queen B6 is the first unique move of the game. And so we come to a brand new game here. That was the twelfth move. Pawn to g4. That's interesting. Well, the idea is you're willing to keep your king in the center and sack this pawn because the rook's going to come over to the g file if he if he gets if uh, black captures. Yeah, you know what, I, I'm an E4 man, so a lot of these D4 lines I'm not really all that qualified to comment on. But, yeah, maybe the whole idea is he was planning on pushing that G man and didn't want any lines of attack against the knight here. Or he's going to move the knight and relocate the bishop because he's anticipating bishop b7 at some point, looking down the long diagonal. Perhaps he wants to, he can't play to e4 because of the knight. So he wants to move the knight and play to f3. <clears throat> LJ's favorite D4 opening is the Black Mar Deemer Gambit. So here's here it is now already, Bishop B7. So after Knight takes G4, Knight E5 is an idea. Knight takes g4. 
I was thinking knight g4, rook g1 is probably the most direct approach. You like some sort of knight e5 idea? You got... I think the g knight just comes back, yeah. Yeah, just an idea. You're, you're opening the d file. But yeah, rook hg1 cannot be wrong uh, in this position. So anyway, but here we have bishop b7, and we're only one move away from it, this open diagonal. And now pawn to g5, of course, continues the whole idea. And after pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn. You have this nice open line here and here. It wouldn't be surprised to see the king step over to d2 and the other rook come to g1 and leave this rook, the king's rook, on h1 for support of the h man. Uh, because, okay, you've got all this. If you can open the h file, you already have the queen looking up there. And yes, this bishop does the important job of protecting the obstruction. The obstructing knight, the knight obstructing any attacks on the h rook. And sure enough, the diagonal is opened, and rook to g1 is played here anyway. So the idea of keeping rook on h1 to support the pawn pretty much goes out the window with this move. I wondered if you could throw in d takes c5 here. Oh, yeah, but after d takes c5, okay, you've opened the file. But I think after knight takes, yeah, that just, you're right. You're right, Eddie. He's, he can just refute it easily. Something more concrete. Rook g1 makes sense. Getting in line with the king. One might have had hopes of getting both files under rook uh, observation, but this makes sense. You don't want your knight tied down to f3. Rook f to d8 is played here. Yeah, that's another idea LJ points out. You could always lift the rook and bring it over and control the h file and still get your king to d2 and bring the other rook to the g file. Right. He who takes releases the pressure onto himself. So a super attack on the knight, two attackers, only one defender. And this nifty bishop move, immediately taking advantage of the g-file. Bishop to f8 defends. Look at this nice knight sack. Knight takes f7, drawing the king to f7. And now, oh, I thought queen g6 was coming. Uh, yeah, Eddie and I had the same thought. Just play queen g6 right away, but he chose bishop takes g7, which probably is just as good. And then after pawn to c4... Pawn to c4 here. Why did he feel it necessary to move that pawn? Yeah, or you could just 
play queen g6 right away even. Queen g6 right away. Um, no. Yeah, you can play queen g6 right away. Of course you can. And he does. Queen g6 right away. King e7. Hmm. Pawn to e4. Okay, pawn to e4 wants to cut off the bishop, I'm I'm presuming. But that does allow queen to f4. Pawn was on e3 stopping any queen encroachment. Yeah, I think uh, pawn to e4 probably wasn't... Retrospectively, I don't think allowing the queen into your camp is a good idea here. But it's not enough to say e4 is a mistake unless you can really prove it by showing what was a better move. All right, we see that it was a mistake because it allows queen into white camp. But what should white play instead? So if you want to obstruct the diagonal, maybe can d5 work? Okay, Eddie's saying we're okay with e4. Who cares about queen f4? Because after e5, all right, let's play it. Let's go ahead and say I don't. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding a better move than pawn e4. Unless we play pawn to d5, if maybe pawn to d5 might be a better choice. So e4, queen f4. And now he plays d5 rather than e5. E takes. So e5, if we play e5 here. Let's say knight e4, oops, so knight would have to take e4, and now you've got this, you got that there. And now you're going to have to move your queen. I think white is still, I mean, it's still playable. White would have to move his queen to h5. Well, this is still a game for, for both sides. I think white can uh, still, still has a playable game here with e5. Um... It might be just as good, e5. I don't think e5... Okay, it's frightening looking at first. But once you get rid of the knight and get your queen on h5, how does black continue? Queen f7. Queen f7. Queen F7. But now you you leave your rook, your bishop undefended, and there's a fork here. So. Um, he has to get out of check. 
and then he's actually, forget the fork, he's skewered. He's skewered, forget the fork. Who cares about the bishop? You're going to win the queen. <laughs> now, is there any other defense than king e8? Well, no. There's the only other defense. Okay, you could give your knight away. That's all right. I get, I get that, and then I'm going to get the bishop anyway. So I, yeah, queen, queen can't go to f7. So anyway, all that is for naught, because that's not what was played in the game. He actually played d5. d5 here. e takes d5. Rook to g5. Bishop takes bishop. Queen takes bishop with check. Rook f5, what's the threat for rook f5? Uh, da, 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 da. And why bishop takes bishop? So rook f5. Maybe there's a, I mean, rook g5, rook, maybe there's a rook f5 threat. Because now you got, you're piled up here on f6. And then you have all these attackers. So... The, the reason for bishop takes bishop then is to remove one of those attackers. And so you still have two defenders. So if, if the rook plays here now, well, the queen can x-ray defend and you're okay here. In fact, you're probably winning now. You're probably winning, black's probably winning there. So you can't play rook f5 now. Now you have to just recapture the rook with check. I mean the bishop, excuse me, with check. And then uh, king e6 was played. Bishop g4 check. Yeah, that's exactly why bishop takes bishop. You have to get rid of one of the attackers. Yeah, you, you're darn right, ouch. So the king has got to squeeze over here somewhere to get out of this danger. Yeah, king d6 is the move here. Oh, he took it. He took it. Now let me think here. Is that the best move? I think that's not the right move. Rook takes g4, heats the queen. Queen goes to e5. I think you have to play king. You have to play for the safety of, of the queen's side here. You have to try to evade and get into the safety of your the multitude of your pieces. Because how does white continue after... After king to d6. I think his attack is pittering out here. You 
can't play the idea of rook f5 here again because queen takes bishop. What do you have left for white? You could always try to get in line here, but as soon as you do, the king steps back to c7. Okay, well, that moves into a pin, though. So maybe not king c7. Well, king c5 is not any better. King c7 is probably your best bet. He can probably, bishop takes knight, knight takes bishop, and you might be okay. Black might be okay here. You can throw a check, but then bishop takes, rook takes, yeah, it looks like black might just be holding here. It's hard to say. There's a lot there's so many different variables at this point, but I think taking the bishop is not the right idea. Tiger Singh is now following. Welcome Tiger. All right, so rook can just take g4 with tempo queen to e5. Queen to h6, no, rook to g6 is played here. And knight has to block. Or you're losing major. And there goes the bishop. None of that possible if you had played King to e, d6. Pawn, the, pawn takes e4. And that king is out in the middle of the board open. Knight to d5 is a nifty little move here. You liked queen b6 check. Um, queen b6 check. King F7. And then the rook has to move. He's got enough defenders. Now this move that he came up with, this knight move, wow. It attacks the pinned piece. It's double protected. And so... If he plays rook takes d5, he didn't. But if he takes this, and after queen takes d5, then queen b6 check, and you're just winning. You can't block because you have the X-ray tactic that loses. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, what a move. But he tried rook to b8, rook a to b8. Well, I mean, you just have a hook mate, almost a hook mate. Now he, he resigned here. He resigned. King f5 is forced. Rook takes f6. The queen's hanging anyway, no matter what you do, so the only reasonable move is to take. And you're mated very soon here. Very soon, just threaten the magic square. What you gonna do? Okay, if you try playing something like this, this is still checkmate. <laughs> Woo!